Hey guys, this week I've made this bench purely out of hand tools. Usually in my videos I go, uh, you can use hand tools, but I use power tools out of convenience. But today I used only hand tools for this. I'm gonna show you step by step how I built this. So the basic construction are just mortise and tenons. And actually, this is the most mortise and tenons I've cut in a project. I never made a table yet with mortise and tenons. So one, two, three, four, five, six is the most that I've made. Two of these are normal wedged mortise and tenons, and these ones at the side are called tusk mortise and tenons, which I've cut just a tenon with a part sticking out here, and that you can pound wedges on either side to lock it in tight. Actually, this is the second bench that I've made. I'm not sure if I've made more, but if I remember, this is just the second one. This is the one that I made this week, and the other one is another bench that I've actually also made. I can link the video in the description. I made it last year. Some of you followers may be able to recall. So this bench, it has a lot of paint. It's been used for paint. I'm not really sure why. But yeah, you can see the wood darkened over time. This is a picture from it last year, and you can see just how drastically it darkened. But yeah, back to the video. Hope you enjoy! All I used for this project are two 2x4s and a scrap of 2x3. First, we're gonna work on the feet. First, I mark here 10 inches because we're going to be laminating three 2x4s for the seat and that would equal to 10 and a half inches and I would want the feet to equal the seat so I'm gonna cut four pieces to 10 and a half inches. Use your previous piece to mark the next piece so all of them will be exactly the same size. Next, I'm going to face plane them because we're going to be laminating them. After gluing it, I planed the sides flush. There was a piece where the other side was actually much wider than the other side, so I needed to bring out my jack plane to quickly take care of that. So here I'm using my tin can forge just to lay out the curves, but you can use any circular object that is in the appropriate size. Okay, so here I decided to cut out the curves first before doing the mortise and that was kinda a bad idea because since my leg vise isn't fixed yet, that means work holding will be a problem and as of now, the only way to hold this would be my twin screw vise which is a problem because it racks or to just clamp it down in the bench but it's not really that easy to clamp something curved into the bench, is it? So for the curves, I basically just cut the relief cut so it will be easier to split. And then I follow the curves with the chisel. I also thought it would be cool to add a circular detail there so I added that in. You can clean the curves with a file or you can also wrap sandpaper around the dowel and do just that. Using a spoke shave would be good but my spoke shave can't handle a curve that steep. I pound in some scrap pieces of wood with nails just so I could make a temporary holder so I can cut out the mortise. Then I cut the mortise with a chisel. The mortise is about 3 quarter inches wide and it is 2 and a half inches long. When I remove the waste, I usually like to use a smaller chisel just so that it doesn't mess up the sides. Also, I'm gonna make the mortises one and a half inch deep. Okay, here I cut out two 16-inch pieces from the 2x4 because we're gonna use those as the legs for the foot. After that, I start laying out the tenon. I just use the ruler and the square for the sides. 
But it's also better if you use a marking gauge just like this. And then I just use the square to carry the lines down but there's another technique that I'll show you later on. And then I just cut it out. My tenon saw is this hard point tenon saw which really sucks but later I'm gonna use my Ryoba and you'll see better results. Next, I do some pairing with the chisel until it gets a really nice and tight fit with the mortise. For the bottom curves, I just do the relief cuts again and then chisel out the curve. So for the other foot and leg, I do exactly the same except I chisel the mortise before chiseling the curves. You can see here just how much better and cleaner the Ryoba does than that back saw that I just got online. Even if it's cleaner than the last, I still pair it with a chisel to smoothen it and also to get a tight fit. I tried to use my turning saw to cut out the round detail but it turns out that my turning saw can't handle that tight of curves. So this is another 2x4 for the seat that we're gonna make. I'm gonna be making my bench seat about 2.5 feet long. You can make yours a lot longer than this if you want because the way we built the legs and the feet are pretty sturdy. Or if you want it to be even shorter or smaller, sure you can do that too. But right here, I'm going to be cutting three of them because we're going to edge joint them to create a seat. I'm actually going to be preparing this one piece first because I'm going to be cutting a new type of mortise that I've never done yet, I'm pretty sure before. So I'm doing it on this one first just in case something goes wrong, I'm just wasting one piece instead of three of them. Here, I'm marking out the mortises and the reason why I said this is my first time cutting, it's because this type of mortise actually goes across the grain instead of with the grain. To make it easier, I use a bit brace with a bit. If you don't have it, then you could just use your corded or cordless drill because I'm pretty sure many people have those at home. And then I'm gonna use my chisel to remove the waste. Next, we're going to be tenoning the other side of the legs to fit the top. Even if 2x4s are only 1.5 inch thick, I make these tenons 1 and 3 quarter inches long just so that there's gonna be some extra room to flush cut. As you can see here, instead of a square, you can just use your finger as a guide and carry down the line. After doing some pairing with both of the tenons, I got a really nice tight fit. So I'm just flattening the sides of the boards that we're going to edge joint including this middle one and the two side pieces since we have three of these. I'm not really aiming for a perfectly seamless joint but I want it to be flat enough so that it's pretty sturdy. 
After flattening the sides of the three pieces, now it's time for the glue up. For the stretcher of the bench, we're going to be cutting a tusked mortise and tenon. I'm not really gonna go into that much detail, but we're going to first cut out the mortise, which is about 3 quarter inches wide and 1 and a half inch long, 5 inches up the board. So for the brace or stretcher, I just used this scrap of 1x3 which just already happens to be exactly the same length as my seat which is, you know, 2.5 feet. So after planing it flat, we're gonna be cutting tenons on each side. Since there are 20 inches between the legs, our tenons are gonna be 5 inches. We're not going to make it any shorter than this because we're still going to be putting the wedges in for our tusked mortise and tenon. This joint is actually supposed to be a loose tenon from what I've heard from researching, so that's what I did. I rounded the edges of the tenon so it doesn't hurt anybody. So here, I dry fitted everything and sadly I don't have footage of the dry fit. But now we're going to be cutting the mortise that will accept the wedges for the tusk mortise and tenon. Here on the top part of the tenon, I mark where it meets the leg. Next, from the 2x3 or any wood that you have, just make the wedges. These ones in particular are about quarter inch thick and then it's about 1 inch wide and 3.5 and inches long. For the angle, I marked 1 inch from the top and about a quarter inch from the same side in the bottom. And I just cut to it and that creates an angle. Looking at my layout, remember that that line we traced from the leg of the bench? Well, I just moved that a quarter inch to the side so that the wedge will have more space to pull the leg in. Also, I've marked the angle of the wedge there at the side so that it can guide my chisel because the angle of the mortise needs to be the same as the angle of the wedge. Same for the right side, it's just straight and then the one on the left is angled. Same for the other side. The wedge still doesn't quite fit, so I just extended my mortise out of the line, which is fine as long as it works. So as you can see here, it works. The loose tenon goes inside the mortise, and then I take the wedge, I put it in, and I give it a few whacks, and it's just held rock solid. Now to do it to the other side. After I did the same for the other side, it's time for a dry fit. I like it. So now, let's make it permanent. Here, I'm just cutting wedges. You're gonna need 8 of them. For me, I cut 4 shorter ones and 4 longer ones. The shorter ones will go to the bottom and the longer ones will be at the top so you could flush cut them. So here, I'm adding 2 slots to every tenon except for the tusk mortise and tenon so that it could accept a wedge. <laughs> For the final assembly, I'm using glue, but trust me when I say you don't need glue. These tight joints with the wedges will surely hold fine or really fine even without glue at all. 
So how this joint works is that you see those two wedges at the bottom. Well, if you pound it in, then the bottom of the mortise is going to hammer them upwards, which is going to make the tenon expand, which will make this super tight joint that I almost can't even get fully through without really, really banging on it. And right here, the tusk mortise and tenon goes in. With wedging the seat, you really want to be careful because if you're looking at the grain direction, you're essentially splitting the wood apart with the wedges. So just tap them until they stop. Don't over tighten it or it might split your seat. Next, you're gonna wanna flush cut the excess tenon and wedges and you want to be careful here and make sure that there's nothing in the way and don't do it like me because when the saw and the tenon came loose, it hit my arm. Now this is a much better way to do it because it hits nothing. <laughs> and here I just chamfer the sides. And then I add a coat of boiled linseed oil. After a follow-up coat of beeswax, it's pretty much complete. So, sorry if this video is a little long. I just wanted to add a little bit more info. But if you still have questions, you could ask in the comments. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to write it down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!